everyone, it's Jan with What You Make It, and I am here to share a fun little technique that I seem to be going to again and again. Um, and actually, there's two techniques on this layout. One involves creating this silhouette, and the other is doing this little confetti work around it. I, If you are a blog reader of mine, and I'll put a, a link to my blog down here, if you're a blog reader, you know that my layouts lately seem to end up with lots of little bits and pieces of things on them. I'm kind of in a confetti mode, and most of the confetti just comes from what happens to be laying on my desk um, from punch outs and that sort of thing. So, But I'm going to show you how we make this kind of halo confetti thing around her, and I'm going to show you how we I made the silhouette. So that you will kind of have an idea that you don't have to use just this stencil. This was created with a crafter's workshop stencil. I'm going to move this out of the way and show you this stencil. And one of the things that makes this work so well is that there's lots of open space on a stencil. You could probably do this technique without um, with something that was more detailed, but I think the punch and the wow factor comes with it when you have an open stencil. If you don't have access to this, know that you could do it um, you could use some, if you have some steel ruled dies and some old packaging, you can create your own stencil by doing the die cut and then, and then I put some painter's tape on the edge of it to make it a little bit larger. The other thing that I do is if I'm using a steel ruled die that has multiple things on it, I go ahead and tape over those other elements so that when I'm using that as a stencil, um, I, I'm not having to be too careful about getting into those other parts. If you do um, cut your own stencil, be sure and hold on to this extra piece because I have some fun techniques that we're going to do. With so that. before I show you the technique, I want to show you a couple of other things that I've created using this same idea so that you can adapt it to your own to your own projects. This is a project that I use the same technique that I'm going to show you, except I didn't create the halo. And the other thing that I did was I did some stamping before I put the stencil down and created the embossing area. But I think it dresses up the bag. It's going to be a little gift bag for my friend Tasha. And when I get some things inside of it, it's going to be very fun. This is another project that I've done with basically the same technique. I did some stamping down here. This is going to be the front of a card that I created with a paper tray ink stamp set called the Sweet Life that does multi-step stamping and it's really simple and this was a just a card front that I made just testing out the the stamps and some color palettes and and those sorts of things so if you would like me to do a tutorial on this multi-step stamping because I know that paper tray ink is beginning to develop more pro more stamp sets like this um, I'd be happy to but again this is a just a some another thing that I did with this same technique so now you've got some ideas of how you might use it. Let me show you how easy it is. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do is figure out the placement of your stencil or your silhouette element on your layout. Or if you're doing a smaller version, many of the Crafters Workshop stencils come in a smaller version. So you have that option if you want to do a smaller version on a card. Figure out where your placement is, and then I'm going to use some painter's tape, just some low-tack masking tape, whatever you have. First of all, to cover up the elements that I don't want to involve in this process. That's the first thing. It just kind of helps me keep from accidentally going over there. And then I'm going to put just a couple of pieces here on my work surface to anchor my stencil. So now that we have everything in place, we're going to use our Versamark embossing pad. You can also use the Ranger um, Distress Ink 
embossing, whatever is your clear embossing, because we're going to be working with UT, the ultra thick embossing enamel. And I am not going to show you stamping into this area like I did for the others, because on the layout, what I did was I just created the silhouette and then I used a Sharpie um, to do my journaling over it. So for this particular version, I just wanted the silhouette with the halo around it. So let's take our embossing pad and let's put it down and press. And what we're wanting to do is just push into the paper some of this embossing ink. And it stays juicy. That's one of the things that makes it really great for a technique like this is that you don't have to get really worried that you have to get your embossing enamel on it too quickly. And you can tell that the paper is changing color when you have gotten your ink on it really good. Just take your time. I push and just wiggle it a little bit, particularly on paper like this that is textured. You have to work a little bit harder. Just press your edges down in there. Now that we have our ink everywhere, you can see that the silhouette just in a watermark is, is kind of cool, but we're going to add our ultra thick embossing enamel to it. And I'm just being generous because I'm gonna just dump it back into my, my box here. So I'm just kind of getting it over the main areas. Then I'm going to just shake it to the center dump it back into my and any place that I have not gotten it on I'm gonna go back and just add it again now that we're at this stage we are in no hurry just take your time I'm going to take a paintbrush and just brush them away now because we're doing the halo effect again I don't have to worry too much about this because we're going to be doing some other other techniques around it. But I will say that one of the reasons that you may want to take just a little bit of time and do this is that anywhere our embossing powder is, it's going to resist the other techniques that we're going to do. Let your heat tool heat up. If this is the first time that you've ever done embossing, this isn't a hair dryer. This is a heat tool. It doesn't put out a lot of, of air. It puts out heat. And you need it to melt this embossing powder. Once it gets warm, you can go ahead and, and begin putting it on the top. Move it around a little bit, but kind of hold it in an area until you begin to see the color change. That's an indication that our our embossing powder is is melting and then just move the heat tool on to another another area and I'm going to go ahead and finish embossing this because watching this is probably like watching grass grow but I'll be back in just a minute to show you the next step in our technique so she is done you see we have a good thick um, embossed image she's a little raised so it's a little tactile which is kind of fun and cool and now we're going to start creating the halo effect and for that I'm going to use some spray inks now I'm using Mr. Huey's you could use your reinkers this would also really be a great technique to use maybe your distress stains on if you were working on a lighter paper doing this that you could then stain that would be a, another thing you can do you know i i am a huge believer in use what you have make do with what you have um, some of these other inks that i'm going to to do you could create something like this by putting a little acrylic paint in a sprayer with some some water so you know don't feel like you see me do something and i'm saying go buy all of these products they're great products i obviously i'm a fan of them if i use them but i am um, i want you to use what you have find out what works for you and then then we can go. So to create this, I'm going to do some spraying and I want some areas to be concentrated and some to be not so much. And then I'm going to take 
some a baby wipe and here where she is I can just wipe and it you know I'm, I'm messing with all of it I'm doing this is where I'm kind of creating the halo by using my damp baby wipe to do this background it wipes it off of her but it also begins to make kind of a halo around here now I'm going to do it again and I'm going to use a dry paper towel to wipe away so that I um, can keep some of that background around her. need to dry it with a little bit of a hit from your heat gun she's beginning to look like she's at a party it's fun okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some just ink spots just by taking my ink and tapping it it gives you a little sense of motion and now we're gonna get just a little crazy I've got some bronze ultra thick embossing enamel and I'm going to sprinkle it let me show you what that is it's the same thing as the clear ultra thick embossing but this is in bronze you can try it in different colors and the technique you noticed I didn't put any ink down so you would think that it would just blow away right well I just want little bits and spots like confetti so I'm going to sprinkle it lift the paper up turn my heat gun on let it get warm and then I'm going to heat it from the back side I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here so you can go in this way you can see and I just hold it up and you need to hold it kind of close and you need to watch watch for that to melt and because we're not putting any blowing air on it you don't need ink to make it stick it will melt you can see it's beginning to melt up here in this corner and it will melt and, and kind of embed itself into the paper and whereas on most everything else we would hate it if we had little flecks of our embossing powder just all over the place here it kind of looks like confetti so let me get some of this confetti around her and I'll be back to show you the next step. okay so we have a pretty good party going on here you can see we've got a lot little confetti I'm going to add um, some pewter ultra thick the UD only because I have it and um, I think one of these would be plenty but I want you to just kind of see what the effect is so let me do that heat it up so you don't have to wait ultra patiently while I melt the ultra thick and I'll come back and show you the results so now that we've done all of our embossing there's plenty of festivity going on with this but I'm going to show you the last thing that I did just to add one more dimensional layer I have some tiny jewels that are just keeping a tin and I have these are some little stars they came from when I was die cutting this strip of stars and I just kept from the various colors I stuck them in a tin if I'm I guess lately I've had little bits and pieces of things on my my desk and I just use them and so I just took some Tombow Mono Tombow Mono Aqua it's a clear drying glue and has a nice little small tip and then I just picked up a star and stuck it down and I was very random I wasn't paying too much attention to color or placement because confetti it just goes up in the air and it is where it is and so you want to be random and not be super worried about placement and 
So very quickly you can add your stars, you can put some gems, if you want a few more splashes of ink, whatever you need to make the party that you want, um, great. You may not even want to add any of this extra when you are doing your own because you may have gotten some ideas from those other ideas that I showed you. Finally, I'm just going to show you that I did my journaling on here with, I am using a silver metallic Sharpie. Um, and it, I like the silver on the dark colors. Um, I don't really think the white Sharpie, it's a paint pen and I can't write as easily with it. So I like, um, I like writing with the Sharpie permanent marker and the silver shows up really well. I hope you've had some fun. I've had fun sharing this technique with you. It was, it's just happy. It just makes me happy to do fun things like this and to get to share them with you. It's good to be back. I hope you will try this for yourself. Even if you're not going for a festive party look, maybe you'll want to try one of the other ones that was a little more sedate, and, but it's just as fun. I know you'll have a good time. Good to be back with you. Have a great week and be sure and take some time for creative play. See you soon.